The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Here is a chaos of humanity approaching two million people that comprises the largest twin border cities on the continent, El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Yet surrounding these cities lies the continent's largest and least known desert, the Chihuahuan Desert, our North American outback. Located within Mexico and the United States, the Chihuahuan Desert is larger than over 60% of the world's nations. This is a vast land of distances and grand vistas unencumbered by the obscuring cloak of vegetation. To pass into the desert, whose boundaries lie undefined and obscure in the wilderness, is to pass into a place that is absolute in its remoteness. Enormous expanses of space without road or habitation. This desert is a land of color, color that reflects hundreds of millions of years of geologic history laid bare as the ages of the earth rose up into mountains and mesas. Above all, this is a land where rain is often only a memory. People have long marveled at the ability of desert plants and animals to survive and even flourish in this arid land, a region that often receives only a few inches of rainfall each growing season. Such adaptations suggest a sense of permanence in the desert and an expectation that this land and climate must be somehow ancient, existing relatively unchanged for hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of years. Permanency of nature and climate is perhaps a convenient illusion since we feel uncomfortable with the concept of rapid change in things we so depend upon, such as climate. But the permanency of this desert is an illusion. Like old mountains, the pyramids of Egypt have begun to crumble when this desert as we know it came fully into being. For indeed, this desert is still in its infancy. How then did the desert come about? And what existed here before the desert? To answer these questions, we must go back in time, 12,000 years ago to the last ice age, and back to a climate unlike any climate that exists today. The first chapter of the desert's story begins here. In the caves above me, is preserved a history of the climate and the very vegetation that existed here 20,000 years ago, perhaps even 50,000 years ago. 12,000 years ago, a pack rat built a nest here out of the plants that grew at the cave's mouth. Inside the nest, it built a refuse chamber where it dumped uneaten plant material, plants that were also collected from right outside the cave. The dry air in the cave has preserved the leaves, twigs, and seeds of those plants that grew here at the time. Today we find them in the cooler, wetter mountains, but pine needles in this pack rat nest tell us that this dry hillside was once covered with trees growing in a climate much different than now. In fact, this cave has no remains of desert plants from that time period. What was the climate of this area like during the last ice age when glaciers covered half the continent? Contrary to what we might expect, Winters were actually warmer than today's winters. At times, they were even frost-free. We know this because here we find fossils of animals that are still alive today, but live in tropical climates. Summers were colder than at present, and there was more moisture available for plant life. But the climate was more complex than that. In fact, this climate is a mystery unique to the Ice Age. For example, Ice Age fossil sites in this region reveal that certain animal species were living together in one place. All these particular animals are still alive today, but they no longer exist together in the same place, but rather as different groups in three very different environments. Today, four of these animal species are found in central Colorado, a climate of rather cool, moist summers and very cold winters. 
Another group of seven of the species is found in Louisiana, subtropical, warm and humid, mild winters. And seven species are found here in the Chihuahuan Desert, dry, very hot summers, cold, dry winters. Not only was the climate of this region unique 12,000 years ago, but the animal life was unlike anything we'll ever see alive again on this planet. I'm walking along the footprints of an extinct Ice Age animal. They were made as the animal walked down to what in those wetter times was a lake. The enormous weight of the animal compacted the soil under its feet, and today erosion is carrying away the softer surrounding sediments, exposing the footprints. Those footprints measured fully two feet across. They were made by a Colombian mammoth, a larger and less hairy cousin of the woolly mammoth. These Ice Age animals were magnificent and bizarre beasts. Bones and tusks of these and other Ice Age creatures are eroding out here in the desert. Giant camels. Huge ground sloths that stood as tall as a grizzly bear. There was even an American lion. In fact, this land once looked like the plains of Africa, filled with great herds of herbivores and their stalking predators. And then they were gone. In just two or 3,000 years, over 40 species of Ice Age animals became extinct, and we may never know why. One theory proposes that the retreat of the glaciers enabled human hunters to enter the continent and hunt the animals to extinction. Another theory blames the drying climate. Maybe both theories are correct. Perhaps human hunters provided the final end to an Ice Age fauna that was less and less able to cope with a drying land. Whatever the cause, many unanswered questions remain. For example, how did the bison survive the Ice Age extinctions to populate the plains in the tens of millions? And why did our Ice Age horse become extinct yet its European cousin flourish after introduction here by the Spanish. We may never know the answers to these questions, but this we do know. The great Ice Age animals disappeared, and the climate did change. Changes were gradual at first, a little less rain, shifting seasonal rainfall patterns, colder winters, and warmer summers. Suddenly, about 7,000 years ago, the entire region was blasted by a 2,000-year episode of heat and drought that some believe was hotter and drier than even today's desert climate, a period scientists call the altithermal, the long drought, in a land still covered by plant species unadapted to such a climate, there occurred catastrophe. Rainfall was too little for vegetation that now wilted under summer sun. Plants died, and the soil, once held together by plant roots, soil that had been stable for tens of thousands of years, began to blow away. For some 2,000 years, the land underwent the torment of heat and wind. Then, around 4,000 years ago, some soil stability becomes evident, perhaps as the result of the establishment of today's drought-tolerant desert plants. In fact, pack rat nests and data from pollen indicate that not until this time does a full complement of today's desert plants occur in this area. The desert has finally arrived. But from where? Where did the desert exist during the Ice Age? The surprising answer is likely that the desert never did exist before 4,000 years ago, making our outback a very extraordinary desert indeed. But that's a story for another time.
The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.